for the blood to do that. But 50 milligrams of iodine can reach a 10 to the minus fifth molar concentration in someone who's healthy in about three to six months. Someone who's sick, breast cancer, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, thyroid cancer, autoimmune disorder, it can take them sometimes years to reach that level. But only iodine can do this. Now, how much iodine is stored in the body? Here's the thyroid. We talked about it, 50 milligrams per day at saturation. The breasts, a minimum of 5 milligrams per day. That's for a 110-pound woman. However, a larger woman or a woman with larger breasts requires more iodine. Men have smaller breasts and a smaller iodine requirement. The other glandular tissue, a minimum of about 2 milligrams per day. And we, we went through this slide. Every cell in the body contains and utilizes iodine, but it's concentrated in the glandular tissue. And here's how to check the levels. You can do blood levels, saliva levels. Um, you can do skin testing. You rub iodine on the skin, and you observe for its disappearance of the yellow color. Um, but it's, it's a really inaccurate test. And studies have shown about 88% of the iodine evaporates from the skin. Um, the theory is that if the iodine goes away within 24 hours, your body's sucking it up and you're really deficient in iodine. I say it's, it's a lousy theory and it doesn't really hold much weight. The best measure is urinary testing. And the, the, the iodine loading test is what Dr. Abraham developed. That's what we use. Either that or a spot iodine test if you're not taking iodine. And here are the two labs that can do an iodine loading test. Um, both labs do a good job with it. And um, I suggest before taking iodine, get your iodine levels checked and work with a knowledgeable healthcare practitioner who can help you with this. So we know iodine is present in every cell of the body. Many different glands and cells concentrate iodine against the gradient. It's carried by this train called the sodium iodine symporter. One atom of iodine into the cell, two atoms of sodium transported into the cell. Now here's Nurse Denny. In the orange here shows um, the mean of six female patients who took 50 milligrams of iodine and what happened to their serum levels. And you can see it went up and they peaked about two to four hours and then it gradually went down over 24 hours. Denny in gray, she peaked about one hour and by three hours she's pretty much down to zero. Now Denny was that one that was above the reading on the first 24 patients in that slide. When Denny took that 50 milligrams of iodine, she got side effects, she was irritable, she got a headache and she had palpitations and she said, what are you doing to me? And she was my nurse and she works a full day on Tuesday and she was yelling at me all day and um, it was not a pleasant day. But here's why Denny was feeling so bad. Here's her bromine levels and you can see that time zero, before she took bromine, she was at near toxic levels of bromine, just, just in her bloodstream, just walking around. When she took the iodine at time zero, you can see one hour later, it goes up about 25%. And now she's at really toxic levels of bromine. No wonder why she feels so bad here and she's yelling at me all day. Now, Denny still finished 11 hours. She's still high in bromine. So what we did with Denny was we ascertained that she was bromine toxic, that she was probably iodine, she was iodine deficient, and... Now, Denny wouldn't take iodine. She felt so bad she didn't want to do it. What happened was she was detoxing from bromine, and that was all her side effects. So what we did was we gave her vitamin C as an antioxidant to stop the oxidant load that bromine was causing in her body, and we gave her salt, about 5 to 10 grams per day, which is about a teaspoon to, teaspoon to two teaspoons of salt a day, and unrefined salt a day. And then we rechecked her six months later. And what we found, here's her curve now. And her curve matches that normal curve. You can see here from this slide. And she got the iodine in slower and she felt better. Now, she didn't get quite the symptoms she got here. She still got symptoms from iodine. Denny has continued with the vitamin C and the salt. She still won't take iodine because she remembers how she felt. Um, but she feels a lot better on the bromine, I mean, on the vitamin C and the salt. And um, I'm trying to convince her now to do some updated studies for us, but I'll keep you posted on that. So when problems with iodine use, think detox, vitamin C, salt, water, liver and kidney support, exercise, clean up the diet. All that helps with bromine. Tom, 42-year-old nurse of mine, he initially started with 12 and a half milligrams of iodine per day. He increased his dose to 50 milligrams per day um, because he was, he was feeling better at the 12 and a half but still feeling a little bit tired. What happened to his ratio? Well, when we could do a saliva serum ratio, you could see his ratio at 12 and a half milligrams was very low. At 50 milligrams, he pretty much gets a normal saliva serum ratio of iodine, which is what you would expect when we increase his iodine. But what happened to his bromine? Next slide shows his bromine was 
toxic at the 12 and a half milligram levels, but not as high as Denny, who was in the hundreds. But at the 50 milligram level, look what happened to his bromine. It went up significantly, so his body's able to push more bromine out. Now, Tom felt good. He didn't get sick. This is the difference between people. For those that get sick, they just need more support and more detox support. Tom didn't need quite as much support, and he felt better with it. So I hope I made the case to you about iodine and how important it is. And there's much more than this covered in my book. Um, and, you know, I wanted to scratch the surface and tell you to start thinking about iodine, start reading about iodine. You can look on my website. I write a blog that I publish at least twice a week. Um, it's www.drbrownstein.com. Um, but I hope I've given you thought on iodine. And when you, when you look at iodine, what I want you to realize is that the RDA is inadequate to supply the body's need. The dosage must be individualized. And use a combination of iodine and iodide. And there are two sources of iodine that I recommend right now, Op, uh, Iodorol from Optimox or Iodozyme um, from Biotics. And both of these are available in my office. Um, they're both adequate sources of iodine. You can also use Lugol Solution, which is still available. But most importantly, do appropriate pre- and post-testing and work with somebody that's associated with iodine. And I hope that I've convinced you that medical iodophobia is unwarranted and we can call ourselves cured from that now. So the final thoughts. Iodine deficiency is common. It's not rectified by the use of iodized salt. And iodine deficiency may be the underlying cause of autoimmune thyroid disorders. Using a combination of iodine and iodide is more effective than using iodide alone. And the best results are achieved with a holistic approach. Vitamins, minerals, diet, detox, hormone balancing, magnesium supplementation, salt supplementation. And remember, it's impossible to balance a hormonal system without iodine sufficiency being present. And that includes the thyroid and the adrenals. And the whole body iodine sufficiency generally requires higher doses of iodine than what the government tells us from 12 to 50 milligrams per day. So I'd like to thank you for listening to this talk. I hope I've given you something to think about. And I hope that you will take a critical look at your iodine intake and your iodine levels. And by ensuring that you have adequate iodine intake, you too can achieve your optimal health. Thank you.